Let's take a look at how we can turn this daytime shot into a nighttime shot. This is not your typical blue color grade from day to night. Uh, we're gonna be projection mapping. And because of this, there's a couple points you need to decide before you even pick a shot. First and foremost is the shot needs to have relatively flat lighting. You really wanna avoid hard shadows because those will show up in the projected textures and can ruin the look. So if you're shooting footage or even looking for stock footage, shoot during overcast or on a clear day, you can try and get a shot in the areas that are completely in shadow and are only illuminated by the indirect lighting of the sky. Secondly, any moving objects that are in the shot are going to need to be recreated in 3D and animated. And you could even do this with people if you have enough time by putting in characters to act as their shadow casters. My third and final tip, look out for scenes that have lots of vegetation. This technique works best when there isn't lots of it around. If there are a lot of leaves, you're not gonna be able to model each one of those leaves individually. There's just not enough time. Open up a motion tracking window and import your footage. For this, I'm changing the motion model to affine. Make sure normalize is checked. Next, go through your footage and control click to add tracking points. Make sure you have at least three on the ground plane so that Blender can calculate the floor for you. Add more points to every surface. This is gonna make it easier to align our geometry by using motion tracking empties as reference points. Before solving, select keyframe and these three boxes here. Try to get this solve error as close to zero as you can. I got really lucky here or I'm just that good. Okay, now that we have the track, let's set up the scene. Select three floor markers, click set up tracking scene, then under orientation, click floor. I think this squiggly line is a new feature in Blender. Enable tracking markers under viewport overlays. Add in a cube or plane aligned with the ground and extend it to fill the bounds of the area. I'm just gonna give you a little preview of what we're gonna be doing here. Add a material and add the video as a texture. Increase the frame number, add a new mapping coordinates and set it to window. Now what we're doing is we're projecting the footage onto our geometry. Set it to clip because we don't need it to extend past the view of the camera. Setting the world light to pure black and adding in a lamp, we can already see how we're gonna achieve this effect. We just need to build up the rest of the geometry in the scene so that we get that parallax shadow. If it's too flat for you, add in a displacement node and plug our footage into that. Reduce the scale value and bring down the specular too. Now, moving lights around, we get this primitive depth trick, even with just a flat plane. This effect already looks kind of cool. Now, adjust the ground geometry because this ground is not flat at all. I'm deleting this extra cubiness. Extrude the ground up and we have a wall. Now you just gotta line these up with your empties. Ian Hubert really loves this technique and I love him. If your mesh is in the right location, it should stick to the same spot in the footage when you scrub it. Make sure you scrub the timeline often to check. Now, build out the rest of the geometry. Make use of transform locking by pressing G and then, for example, control Z so that it only moves in X and Y values. When you have basic walls set up, use the knife tool and just start removing chunks. To deal with holes in the wall, instead of just deleting, just extrude it back. Now I'm going to model each one of these rocks because it needs to be done. I'm using the empty as my reference point on where the ground should be. Again, you should see no sliding when it's lined up right. I'm just using cubes and beveling them a little bit and giving them a loop cut here and there and shaping them how I want them. Okay, now when I move the light through the scene, you can see the shadow parallax. The rule is the more time you spend modeling out the scene, the better it's gonna look with the light parallax. From this point on, I'm switching over to Cycles X because it's awesome. On HDRI Haven, I grabbed a nighttime HDRI and plugged that into the world as an environment texture. Select world in the shader node tree and just adding in a simple texture coordinate, I can rotate the HDRI. And I added this object back here to block the light coming from the house that's behind the camera. Turn off ray visibility for all except shadow. This can reduce fireflies in your render. I'm adding in a sun lamp to exaggerate the moon's lighting. Now I'm just going to use a color ramp to adjust the roughness on the material so it's not so uniformly specular. 
Quickly view your textures with Node Wrangler by pressing Control, Shift, and Click. Okay, now I'm going to add in some props. Using a subdivided plane, I will instance vegetation I got from Mega Scans. Add a shrink wrap modifier and select the ground as the target. In a geometry nodes window, add in a point instance and a point distribute node. And include an attribute random node for scale and rotation. Rotation needs to be set to vector to rotate only on one axis. Finally, add in a transform node and lower the grass just below the plane. And what I'm doing here is I'm just filling in the scene a little bit. This is not necessary if all you want to do is change your shot from day to night, but I removed the entire forest behind, so I need to bring trees back in. Using the sapling add-on, which is free, I added a large tree, increased the leaves and the branch splitting. Give the leaves in the tree their own material and convert the tree to a mesh and join them together. Instance these trees by pressing Alt-D, not Shift-D, this will save on memory and your render times. Then I modeled a really simple wall mounted torch and gave it a rusted material from textures.com. I didn't feel like UV unwrapping such a minor detail, so I set it to box projection and with object texture coordinates instead. Now add in a small lamp with a black body node set to a low number. Keyframe the strength and click this selection button in the graph editor to see it. Press N and in the modifiers, add a noise. Add in a location keyframe and do the same. Add in another noise modifier, then you can just copy and paste it into the other channels. Duplicate the point light and adjust the phase on the noise so that it's different. Then move it up slightly and replace its keyframe. This will make the light dance with more than one shadow. Using images as planes, I loaded in this torch video I found. Swap out a principal shader for an emission mixed with a transparent and use the video color info to control the factor. And then use a color ramp to adjust this and everything else in your life. Next, just place it in the torch, duplicate it, and that's it. If I were to do this again, I would pick a 4K resolution video instead of a 1080p. After I downloaded the clip, I realized that it was kind of blurry. A higher resolution video is going to make that displacement look a little better, I think. I hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe for more.